In today's video, we're gonna be installing the Amped Throttle Booster for Dodge Mopar Ram vehicles. So let's get started. All right, so welcome back to today's video, you guys. So this fits a bunch of vehicles from about 2007 and up. Double check your year, make, and model. But this fits a bunch of Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, anything Mopar, essentially, with the gasoline engine. So we're going to be installing it on this Ram pickup truck. And what it does is, if you guys ever felt like with these newer vehicles where they have an electronic pedal, that the pedal is really lazy, you have to almost stomp on it for the vehicle to you know, get moving and get out of its own way. This adjusts and enhances the response response from your electronic pedal. So nice thing with this is you can plug and play. You can have this up and running in about five minutes. Um, there is some other ones on the market that do something similar. The nice thing with this is you can control it all from an app on your phone. You can make your own different maps if you want to, you know, make your own custom map. And you also have a wireless remote that you can, you know, tuck away, hide it in your glove box, wherever you want, rather than having a wired remote, which a lot of the competitor ones have. So we already installed this on the diesel version. So if you guys have a diesel, I'll link above here where you can check out the diesel version of this but install is going to be very similar and the functionality is going to be similar if you want to stick around on this video so let's get it out of the box and show you guys how it works all right so once you open it up you're going to get a quick little instruction booklet scan the qr code or go to the app store if you want to run this thing from your phone you're going to need the app so do that there and then inside the box you're going to see the main brain the module you can see three batteries and this is the wireless remote that i was telling you guys about so you're gonna go ahead and pop open the back. We'll install our three batteries. That way this thing's gonna have some juice and we'll click this back into place. So there we go. You can see the remote powers up. It looks like it's flashing on camera, just the way the LEDs are displaying. And so you're gonna see, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five already pre-programmed maps. And then off to the right, the one, two, three, these are all custom maps that you can set yourself. So like I said, if you guys wanna go crazy building your own maps, depending on the sensitivity or the delivery that you want, you can do that there. So this, we can mount anywhere. We don't have to keep in any specific spot. Like I said, it's a nice thing about this unit. There's no wire that connects these two. So you have to run a wire and you know have a visible wire up on your dash somewhere, which is cool. So get rid of that. And then underneath here, we're gonna have our wire harness. So pretty straightforward on this. We're gonna unplug this because this is gonna go in line with our existing harness. So that's the harness, the factory connector that we're gonna be plugging this into. And essentially the black plug is gonna go into there on the box. And then over here, this white ivory colored plug is gonna go there. And then there we go. We've got our two pigtails that we can plug into our factory harness. Other than that, inside the box, they give you some tie wraps and they give you some Velcro so we can install our actual remote switch. So you guys can choose where you want to mount yours. I chose right in here inside this little cubby so it can be hidden. And then if you want to operate it, you can just reach in here and push it. On the last one, I put it inside my center console, but up to you where you guys want to throw it. I wanted to try somewhere different this time, but it is removable. It's just got Velcro so you can take it off and you know throw it in your cup holder or whatever you want to do when you're using it. So that's that. Let's get on to the wiring. Next up, we're going to disconnect our battery. So next up, we're going to go underneath where your gas pedal is and you're going to see right here this clip. So you're going to squeeze the tab and we're going to lift this off. So you're going to take your harness off of the gas pedal. So next up, you're going to have your clip from your harness. So that's going to plug into the black portion of the cable and then you're gonna have the other end from the box and this is gonna plug it into our harness on our vehicle so essentially you can see what we got here we got our pedal here it's coming in through this wire going into the box and then it's going back out and into the harness for our vehicle so that's pretty much it make sure everything is locked in clicked your red latches safety latches are on Make sure you're fully seated here, and then you can find a spot to mount this box. So what I found on the last truck is I like to put it behind the carpet over here. It fit nicely and it tucked away. So let me see if that's another good suitable spot. Okay, so that is the location that I liked best. Make sure that it's not obstructing your pedal or anything like that. I don't have it right back here, but even still the pedal doesn't fully depress onto the carpet. I have it over here, right where your feet never really go, but Again, personal preference on where you want to put it, but just make sure it's out of the way. So let's go ahead and get to the programming because we do still have to program this before we can get started. 
we'll reconnect our battery. So next up, we've got the Amped app on our phone. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna turn the ignition to run, but not start the vehicle. And what we're gonna do is swipe down to refresh. So it's gonna go through a discovery process. To continue, make sure your vehicle is in the on run position, engine not running. Make sure the pedal is not pressed, hit okay. Press the pedal all the way to the floor and hold it until the amps device is found. So we're gonna take our foot or your fancy sandals, put it all the way to the floor and hit okay. Device found, the discovery process using the pedal is different than the pedal relearn process. If you have not completed a pedal relearn, you will need to do that before the product will function. Well, I guess we're gonna have to do that. Okay, so there's the module there. Let's click on it. It's connecting to it. My foot's not on the pedal, just by the way. So, device name, we can probably rename it. Um, you know, we could put Hemi or whatever we wanna put here just so we kind of know since we've got more of these. So pedal relearn. The pedal relearn process consists of pressing the accelerator all the way to the floor and then releasing it fully. This cycle must be done three times within a 30 second window after selecting okay. So we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna go all the way to the floor, all the way up, all the way to the floor, all the way up, all the way to the floor, all the way up. Confirm the LED color on the amps device change from red to orange. If orange, complete to finish pedal relearn. If red, press retry. So if we go down here, and you can see that the LED is orange, so we're good to go. So now we'll go ahead and we'll hit complete. And that is it. So here we go. So you can see here it says levels. Um, and here is where you can adjust your, you know, custom curves. So you can see save custom one, save custom two, save custom three. And you can adjust, you know, the middle of the pedal, you know, where you want this. You can sit here and drag these wherever you want. So you can adjust your own throttle curves however you want. But what you're mainly going to use and what I mostly use is the five presets. So you can see right now, hopefully you can see it is in number two, which is stock. Number one's economy, three is drive, four sport, five extreme. So you can see the percentages of the boost as well. So stock's obviously 100% because it's just you know not doing anything. And then drive is gonna change 150%, sport 175, you know obviously extreme is 200%. And you can see the LED indication over here, which is pretty cool because it corresponds to what you have here on your wireless remote. So in order to sync the remote, you're supposed to hold it within six inches of the device and push any button on it. But this thing has already synced itself. So you can see there, it's on power level two. And if we go over here, it corresponds. So it's pretty cool. You can go over here, like if we hit it, hit it once, it shows you what you got. Hit it a second time, it changes it. And then if I go back over here, we change it to one economy. If you wanna go to sport, so we put it on the fourth bar over. If I go back over here, so one, two, three, four. So you can see we're on the fourth bar. If I go back over here, you can see it changed on our app. So super cool how it's all integrated like this. Like I said, I haven't seen anything like this, you know, this uh, complex and with this many features. I think it's super cool, but comment down below what you guys think. Okay, so right now you'll see we have it on level two, which is stock. So if I go ahead and I press the pedal, You can see how much of an input versus you know what it sounds like if I go ahead and I put this into sport mode you'll see that the same level of throttle input will make it rev up significantly more hopefully you can hear it I'm sure you guys can hear that difference like this thing is revving up way more for the pretty much same little throttle dab that I'm doing so let's go ahead and let's go for a test drive all right guys, this makes such a big difference. So right now I've got it on sport and this thing is way more sensitive than you could imagine. So hopefully you guys can hear this, but watch, I'll push it even just a little bit. And like that's not much at all as far as how much I'm pressing it. So watch, if I even press it a little bit, so we're accelerating quite significantly with just even pressing a little bit of it. You can 
see how much my foot's moving. It's barely moving at all. And this is on sport. So a lot more pedal response for sure. Let me put it on extreme for you guys. So now we're in extreme. And a lot of people were asking about, you know, pressing it or changing the modes when the vehicle's running. You know, you can see there, I just had my foot off the accelerator and now we're in extreme mode. Hopefully you guys can see there, it's uh, just a little bit of throttle input is uh, really making a difference here. So again, I'll show you guys extreme mode, very sensitive. So you can see I'm barely pressing it and I'm sure you guys can hear the pitch of the engine like it's accelerating. Check this out, just even the littlest pedal movement makes this thing jump, you guys. Like, check this out. I barely touched it and she goes. So if you want extreme, you're gonna get extreme. Like I'm accelerating and I'm hardly moving anything. And if we press down a little bit, that was maybe a quarter. <laughs> and to turn it down, we just hit it and then turn it down. So now we're in sport mode instead of extreme. Or we can go down into the third position as well. I think for daily driving, this is in the third position. I think this is probably the best balance. So it's not stock, so it's not quite as lazy as the stock position, but it gives you a lot of modulation so that you're not driving a light switch. Uh, sports definitely aggressive extreme is exactly as it sounds extreme but third position you know wakes things up without you know making it into a light switch or really touchy or twitchy to drive so there you guys have it that's how you get it done get it installed I know there's gonna be a few questions so I'm gonna do my best to answer them here and then also drop your question in the comment section down below People are going to ask, can you run this with a tuner? Yes, you can run it in combination. So one of the things is with the tune, if you have a tune on your vehicle for, you know, by any of the different methods, um, you can run this in addition to it. One of the benefits, um, you know, you can only adjust it so much in the tune. Whereas with this, you can usually get more pedal adjustment. So if you want it, you can usually only go so much with the adjustment in a tune as far as the sensitivity. And then this will take it beyond that to get rid of that lazy pedal. The other thing is too, the nice part about doing it this way is you have the ability to adjust it on the fly. It's not all the time, in my opinion, that you want to drive with a super uh, sensitive pedal. If you're just cruising around, you probably want a little bit of modulation. You don't want the thing to be like a light switch on you. So it's nice to have that flexibility where you can have an aggressive pedal but if you're just going to get groceries or something you can dial it back and or even put it to stock if you choose so or maybe you know you're letting the old lady take it out you might want to put back the stock pedal so that it's a little bit more of a lazy pedal up to you guys comment down below how you guys would use this device i'll link it down in the description below and also pinned in the top comment where you guys can check out the same device if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe check out the other videos on the channel and we'll see you guys on the next one